Yes, brother. Uh, sir, my name is Gil Roy from Bombay. I'm a businessman. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak here. I really enjoyed today. It's my first time. And my question is about conversions into and out of uh, Islam. Now, many Muslim countries do not permit conversion out of Islam. Some even use the sword and they have death penalty. But correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know of any non-Muslim majority country which prohibits people from converting into Islam. Now, what, what is the right thing in Islam? Because as you say, you know, you don't need the sword for Islam and uh, thousands and millions of followers will anyway get into Islam. Then why, if someone wants to convert out those countries, are they right? I mean, why can't they allow people and see for themselves if someone wants to convert out of Islam? For example, if America today, which is largely Christian, more than uh, majority Christian, if they would prohibit conversions, how, say, conversions into Islam, then what would be your response? The brother asked a very good question and a very important question. This question has got two parts. The first part is that why don't some of the Muslim countries allow conversion or allow propagation? They don't allow the propagation to take place, they don't allow conversion from anyone to convert Muslim to a non-Muslim. Basic question, whether it be anyone. And secondly, what about the death penalty for conversion? What if America today does not allow propagation, does not allow conversion? What will be your state? Very good question. Brother, as far as the propagation is concerned, there are countries, for example, Saudi Arabia, which does not allow propagation, the only country which I know very well, which does not allow propagation, it is Saudi Arabia. And the reason is that suppose, brother, you want to start a school. If you want to start a school, you are taking an interview of a match teacher. So when you take the interview of the match teacher, you ask the question, 2 plus 2 is equal to how much? So one match teacher says, 2 plus 2 is equal to 3. The second match teacher says, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. The third match teacher says, 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Now many people say, what's the problem? Let them preach any religion. Whoever wants to accept, let them accept. I will ask you a question. Will you allow a match teacher in your school to teach 2 plus 2 is equal to 3? Will you select the match teacher who says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5? You say, no, I know maths. I'm definite about it. In maths, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and nothing else. So as far as religion is concerned, Saudi Arabia is very confirmed. It agrees with the verse of the Quran in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19. In Nadina in the Lahir Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Almighty God is peace acquired by submitting will to Almighty God. They will not allow anyone else to preach anything wrong. But in science and technology, they say to the Americans, Ahlan was Ahlan. You're most welcome. They get people from England. They get people from India. No problem. In science and technology, they're not number one. So in science and technology, they have people coming from America, from England, from Singapore, from Philippines, from India, from all over the world. But as far as Dean is concerned, they are cocksure. They're 100% sure this is right. Same as you are cocksure that 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, you will not allow any wrong teaching. Same way, I agree with that. I am a student of comparative religion, brother. There is no religious scripture on the face of the earth besides the Quran, which says that this is the only true religion. You read the scriptures of the Hindus. You read the scripture of the Christians, the Bible. Nowhere does the Bible say that Christianity is right. The word Christianity doesn't exist in the Bible. Do you know that? The word Christianity doesn't exist in the Bible. The word Hindu doesn't exist in the Vedas. Do you know that? Nowhere does the Vedas say that this is the only right religion. Nowhere does the Bible say that this is the only right religion. So Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth. Where Almighty God says emphatically, in Nadina in the Lahir Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Almighty God is Islam. So as far as preaching, propagating, and religion is concerned, I'm sure that if you know what is confirmed, 
they will not allow anyone else to preach something which is wrong. This India, it's a secular country. It's not a Hindu country. It's in the constitution of the people, for the people, by the people. I'm an Indian. Geographically, I'm a Hindu because I'm an Indian. But practicing Muslim, I'm a practicing Muslim. It's my birthright in this country to preach, propagate, and practice this religion. That is what is in the constitution. So you have to change your constitution. What we realize that America is a democratic country. It's mentioned in the constitution about freedom of speech. So what we realize, brother, that if you say that what if they don't allow propagation? What if they don't? How will I feel? It is not mentioned in the Christian scripture. So I will say they're not following their Christianity. They're not following the Bible. Even if you agree this is a Hindu country, which is not. It's a secular country. No way it is mentioned. You being a Christian. I wanted to point out one statement from the Bible which says that Christianity is the only right religion. Yes, brother. Uh, sir, you know, it is about interpretation of the Bible, the Old and the New Testament. It is not difficult for theologians to find an interpretation which says if a Christian converts out of Christianity, he should be put to death as it was in Spain during the Inquisition. But that was 500 years ago. And today, because of human values, I don't know of any Christian majority country which puts or prohibits. I'm not talking of propagation. I'm not talking of preaching. I'm talking of an individual. Suppose an individual in some Muslim country, brother, say Pakistan, brother, say Pakistan. Bro brother, that it, was, brother, that was the second part of the question. That's the reason. Let me complete my answer. You keep on. Didn't I say in the starting, I repeated a question for the benefit of the audience. The brother has got two parts. The first part I covered and your hand is going up. Now when your hand is going up, I'm a medical doctor. Your mind is not paying attention to answer. Correct? We give you a opportunity to ask the question. Give me a opportunity to answer. Yes, brother? Didn't I say you had two parts of the question? So before my answer is over, and if I keep on talking, everyone else will understand, you don't understand. I want even you to understand. I want even you to accept the religion of peace. Correct, brother? Coming to the second part of the question. What if someone wants to accept, wants to come out of Islam? Quran clearly mentions in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 256, like Rafidin, there is no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. So as per se, if someone wants to convert from Islam to any other religion, fine. In the year after, he'll be among the losers. As far as the death penalty is concerned, that only if that person, after converting, if he propagates his new faith and speaks against Islam, then the penalty of death is there. And this is the same law, somewhat similar law in most countries, including India. There's something like apostasy in India. In India, if suppose someone sells the secrets of the country to an enemy, fine? What he's selling may be the truth. He may have blueprints. Some countries will give death penalty, some countries will give life imprisonment, even though he's speaking the truth. So every country has its law. So in Islam, if someone changes from a Muslim after accepting to any other religion and propagates it and preaches it and speaks against it, only if it's an Islamic country. If someone does that in India, no one can kill him here. If he's in a country which follows the Islamic law, now what he's doing? He's causing corruption. He's spreading things which are unpeaceful. So for this, if it's an Islamic country, all the so-called Muslim countries don't follow Islamic law. I would like to tell you. You can go on the fingertips. There are also some people follow this law, some countries follow the other law. I don't know any country in the world which is 100% Islamic. I don't know any. I don't know any. So what we have to realize, brother, that if it's an Islamic country following the Islamic law, and if that country, such a situation takes place, like in India, if someone sells the secret of the country, he'll be put in prison for how many years, I don't know, or maybe put to death, like in America, the same thing. Similarly, this is the law of the country. The country is based on the law of the religion. So based on that, I hope that answers the question, brother. Thank you, brother.